My name is Chris Georginis, first of all, and I'm a Flash animator. My background is art, basically fine art. Um, and a bunch of years ago, I sort of stumbled into the world of animation uh, just before Flash 4 and was working for a company here. I'm on the east coast of the USA and working for a company that did a lot of television shows, a lot of animated shows. And long story short, when Flash 4 came out, we switched over to Flash 4 and basically learned um, how to use it in a full production uh, studio environment. And going from Flash to broadcast animation, there's a bunch of shows that we worked on that, that's on Cartoon Network today. And um, Anyway, I've been for the past two and a half years out on my own doing mostly web development, um, a lot of Flash games. Uh, working with teams, putting together Flash games and interactive adventure series types of things and uh, on a, a huge amount of character animation and as a result over the years I've um, just kind of developed my own little tips and tricks and, and methods of doing things. Um, I'm going to show you today a character, uh, basically how to go from a pencil sketch, scan it in, I'm not going to show you how to scan in. I'm going to assume you all know how to do that, but I'm going to show you uh, to take how to take a scan or how I take a scanned picture and basically build it in Flash and get it to be uh, Flash ready. Um, I'll show you the character right now. You should see it pop up right about now. There you go. This was the original sketch, um, just a simple pencil and paper. I tend to work on uh, paper a lot because I just feel like I draw differently I d uh, as opposed to drawing with the Wacom tablet which is uh, what I have and which is what I love and there's um, but for some reason drawing on with pencil and paper just uh, I just draw differently some, I think I just draw a little better and so then what I'll do is I'll scan the picture in and then I'll proceed to break apart what uh, and draw individual objects to create this character and keep everything as a symbol, keep everything on its own layer, and for the sake of animating, which will come after I show you how I, how I do break up all, all these parts, all these body parts. Now the one sort of mantra with characters in Flash that I have is that form follows function. And, and you know, it's the whole reason why you know, uh, the classic Yogi Bear character has a necktie. It's so that his head can be separate, um, so the animators can freely move the head separate from the body and so you don't have to redraw the body all the time and try to match up the head and neck and body lines and things like that. So uh, this character is kind of a good example of this because it's easy to make all these different little body parts um, a different symbol on a different layer and still have it look like a whole and still feel kind of cool and natural. Um, I'll show you what the quickly what the finished product looks like. You should see that right now. Um, and um, I chose this character. He's one of my newer characters, but um, the reason why I've chosen him is because he was drawn totally with very simple shapes, believe it or not, using the shape tool and a mouse. Normally I would draw with the pen and pressure sensitivity, um, or even sometimes the line tool, and then I'll use the arrow tool to bend the line tool, but I'm going to show you uh, the reasons why I chose the shape tool and, um, and, and basically why I feel it's a pretty fast and easy way to do it. Um, what I'm going to do now is start to sort of dive into my timeline. Uh, you'll see an abundant amount of layers here. And what I'm going to do is Cut these layers off and, well, actually, what I'll do first, cut them off one by one so you can see how many different pieces there are to this character and the reason why I have every single piece on a different layer. Because later when I animate, I like to create what is what I call a 2.5D effect. It's not 2D and it's not really 3D, but it's sort of in between. But I'll get, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Um, so as you can see, I'm just 
shutting off layers and showing you how this dude just gets broken down into the, the most simplest shapes possible. And Flash is just the perfect tool for this because it's just so fast. Um, and its drawing engine is just perfect in a simple way enough to, to pull this stuff off. What I'm going to do is usually the first shape I'll start off with is just the head. Um, and I'll uh, usually create a keyframe next to my scan, a blank keyframe by hitting F7, and then I use the onion skin feature so I can see a ghost of my image. Um, let me try to make my stage a little bigger. I like to work with my stage magnified a bit. Um, and now there's so many different ways for me to draw this. I could use the pen, like I said, which I'm going to do now just for the sake of demonstration. Um, where's my toolbar? I could use the pen and I could draw, but for this, or I could use the pen tool. and go along the contour and bend as I go or what have you. But um, what I chose to do, which I think is much quicker, much simpler, and allows me a little bit more freedom to alter what is called the line weight. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to grab my oval tool. I'm going to grab a fill co color and make it black because what I'm actually going to do at this point is actually create the outline first and it might not seem like that's what I'm doing but it is and I'll show you why I'll first create a rough shape See, um, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab it position it away pull it back if it's not in the right position and I can use the feature where it just turns into outlines when I'm dragging to reposition it. I'm not going to get too technical and too exact at this presentation. Um, if I want to tweak it a little bit, I'll select the free transform tool, play around with the shape a little bit. Now the reason why I've chosen black is this. Once I get the basic shape down, I copy it. Once I've copied it, I'll do a paste in place, which will look like nothing ever happened. While it's still selected, I'll go and grab what is going to be the skin tone. I'll select that skin tone and my shape turns black. Now we still have the original black oval underneath this. At this point, I grab my free transform tool, I hold down the shift key to constrain the proportions and I just basically make this layer or I'm sorry this shape smaller and now I have the freedom and control to move this shape around and the reason why I do this is because if I were to create this shape with an outline the outline would have the same weight and for this character I like to go for um, an outline that has a varied weight because I think it gives more volume to the shape. It gives you a little bit of a hint of 3D or a little bit of a hint of depth. So what I usually do is I'll offset this shape. I can even nudge it with the arrow keys if I want to. And then I just let go and click anywhere off of the shape. And here I have his head. Um, at this point too I could add shading but I usually wait until I finish the character before I do that. Now since we have the basic head shape I will then hit F8 and make it a symbol. And I'll just call it symbol 2 for now, it doesn't matter. Normally I would give it a name right now but I've, um, as you've already seen, I have all these symbols already made in my library and it's just easier. I'll show you later what they all are and how I've named them. Um, and so now what I'll do is create another layer. I'll 
place the layer, move the layer below what I'll call my scan layer that has my scan on it. I'll take this shape, click and highlight the keyframe, and just drag it, get it off this layer. So now you'll see it exists, but it's below my scan. I'll go back and create this blank keyframe next to my scan. So now I can see the scan, and now I can see a hint of the shape I made, and I just keep, I'll move on. I just go, and, and now I'll make the, the ear, let's say. And I'll do it the same exact way with a little bit of a difference uh, that I'll show you in a minute. Let me blow this up so you guys can see it a little bit better. I like to work up close. It's just, um, I think I have a little bit more control when the stage is magnified as much as possible. Um, I deselect the outline also when I make these shapes. And again, don't have to be exact on the first try. I'm going to make his ear. And now, I usually like to, instead of having exact ovals all over the place, sometimes I'll grab the arrow tool and I'll pull the shape around just to make it a little more interesting. Change it up a little bit. Something like that. And again, I use the sketch as just a reference. I usually will refine the character uh, during this process. Uh, as long as I get the basic sketch in there, uh, I'm fine. I select this black shape, and just like the head, I do a copy, and then a paste in place. Grab that color, my fill color for the skin. Grab the free transform tool. Hold down my shift key. And now the difference being that I mentioned earlier with this shape is that I kind of want those black outlines of the ear to taper off towards the head to make it look like it's attached to the head. So I position this a little off center and overlap the lines, the black shape underneath it to the right. And maybe I'll play around with it a little bit more. Maybe that line on the black outline is now a little too heavy on the left. It's all just a question of perception and figuring out what's the best way to make this ear look good. So now we have an ear for which I will select, hit F8, make it a symbol. Um, and then go back to my timeline. We also want to throw this on another layer. Now let me shut off my scan so you can see what this looks like. And I'll demagnify. Um, so once you do this a couple times, it just you can get pretty quick at it. Although, you know, the more shapes, the longer it's just going to take to build your character. Um, let me turn on some more layers. Basically, all these shapes for this character were made this way, with the exception of, I believe, his hair. His body was made the same way. Let me unlock everything. Um, you can see his arm is a separate symbol. I'm also going to, in a minute, talk about the edit center feature, which is huge um, when it comes to animating. Just having the ability to hinge objects like an arm or a hand or a knee or a foot. Um, but first I want to show you, you can pretty much well imagine how all these shapes were made based on the last two shapes I made. His head, I'm going to show you how I made, how I did the shading. It's very simple. Um, I'm going to grab this color. I don't know if I have it in the swatch yet. I'm going to just start off as if the shape never existed. Uh, what I like to do to do shading, grab my rectangle tool, grab the shade color. It's just a slightly darker version of this. It could even be a highlight. You could do this with highlights as well turn off my outlines. Someday Flash will have that as an option to turn it off permanently. Um, and I just make a shape anywhere in there. Anywhere inside 
the head shape. But then I'll turn on the snap to objects magnet tool option and I'll take one of these corners and let it snap to the inside edge. Take the other corner, let it snap to the inside edge. Take my eyedropper, grab this color again, I think I already have it grabbed. And fill, oops, and fill that in. Let me close medium gaps and see if that fixes it. Yes, it does. And basically, now use the arrow tool again and just bend this line. And there's my shade. And go back to the main stage. Turn on some more layers. Oops, I'm turning off stuff. What am I doing? Chris's first day with Flash. I'm going to show you the hair, and um, those are just simple shapes as well. The eyeballs are just shapes within shapes, as you can see. Highlight, pupil, and everything else. And these exist within a symbol, because I don't need to animate all those individual shapes within shapes right now. Carlos wrote, you could also just use your line tool to mark off the section, curve the line, then fill with color. Yes, that's another way, definitely another way. Um, there's his nose. The nose has a little bit of a gradient in it. Just to make it look like he has a cold, I guess. The gradient is simply the normal flesh tone of the character. And then going to a little bit of a red tone. That was it. Very simple. Very basic. This is all very basic flash. Um, the hair. The hair is... Uh, I started... When I animated this, I wanted the hair to sort of flow and bounce just to suggest more weight and gravity to the character. So I kept it a shape and used just basic shape tweens to make it bounce up and make it bounce down. <laughs> 